Welcome to the NNBN Podcast, talking with businesses, charities, and organizations across Northamptonshire. Sponsored by Poppy Design Studio. Find us at poppydesignstudio.com. So in January, I had the pleasure, well, maybe not the pleasure, actually, as for sleeping out for the uh, accommodation concerns, uh, big sleep out this year. And uh, joining me today is the Chief Executive of Accommodation Concern is uh, Joe Moore. So, Joe, before we talk about the um, sleep out, welcome today. And, uh, yeah, do you want to give us the instruction to yourself and what you get up to? Yeah, thank you, Simon. It's lovely to be here today talking to you again. So... Accommodation Concern is a charity based in Kettering that we deliver across the whole of Northamptonshire, both west and north. Um, we have a debt, um, housing and benefit advice agency, um, which has seen quite um, amazing growth over the last few months. Um, and we have supported accommodation houses in North Northamptonshire. Yeah, well, thank you for joining me today and uh, talking through um, yeah, where things are at as well because uh, obviously it's quite a challenging place people find themselves in and you're here to help with those uh, you know those areas you mentioned of debt housing and benefit advice so um if we sort of touch on those uh, one by one before we sort of just go back to talking about the sleep out and some of the work that you've done about um you know preventing homelessness but um let's talk about debt first of all because people find themselves in debt and um you know what can people uh, experience if they come to you with debt problems I think debt is something nobody wants to talk about to start with. And it's the one thing that keeps people awake at night. Um, and one of the fam famous people, Martin Lewis, talks about it a lot. That says, if it's keeping you awake, then come and get help. Um, there's a lot of debt agencies out there. But the first thing I'd say to somebody is you shouldn't have to pay for debt advice. So everything you get from accommodation concern is free. Anybody that wants to charge you for debt advice you should is, is not the best person to see so if you come to see us um, accommodation concern firstly there is no judgment we all get into messes we all spend money on things that we maybe regret later or we make a bad decision the washing machine breaks and we just, just have to buy a new washing machine the car breaks we've got to replace the car or we can't get to work sometimes we think we can afford those loan repayments and then it all snowballs the first thing we'll do with somebody is arrange to meet them. It could be virtually, over Zoom, over Teams, um, FaceTime, WhatsApp video calls, whatever's easiest for people, or they can come and see us in the office or one of our outreach centres. We'll have a chat with them, try and understand what's going on. And the first thing to do is try and put together an income and expenditure. That's looking at all the things you've got coming in and all the things you've got going out. Then we would be looking at, can we maximise what's coming in? Is there any benefits you could claim? Um, do you have any other ways of earning income? Are there things that you're missing? Then we'd look at your outgoings to see, again, is there anything you can cut back on? We won't judge people. That's the biggest thing. If you are spending money on cigarettes, alcohol, recreational drugs, you've got the biggest 75-inch telly, sky packages it's what you choose to spend your money on we're not going to tell you you've got to cut back on anything but we will help you to look at how we can balance those books if we can one of the things we're seeing at the moment is actually people with negative um, income and expenditures so there is nothing more we can do to get income and there is nothing more we can do to cut back particularly we're finding this for people who are already in work and are struggling with their money it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's what we're seeing at the moment. If there is a negative balance, the conversation we will then have is actually what is the less riskiest to not pay? What are your priority debts that you need to keep paying? So things like your council tax where you can go to prison for not paying. Your your rent, you've got to stay in a home. <laughs> um, but some of those bills like your credit cards, They'll be sending you the really big red letters that scare you, but actually they're the lowest down the pecking order. So we'll help to try and come together, put together a plan with that. 
if you're in so much debt that repayments are not going to be um, appropriate, we'd look at some of the other debt relief op opportunities. So it might be a debt relief order. It might be an IVA, which people have heard about a lot, or it might even be bankruptcy. So we'll look at supporting people all the way through the stages of that. Or we can negotiate with creditors. We are really fortunate um, that we have, we now have two um, debt relief um, officer advisors qualified because Raj Beer got qualified yesterday and John's been qualified for a while. So we can actually do debt relief orders in house now, which again, from a client's point of view, means they're dealing with the same person all the way through. So you get to build that relationship and trust them. And we're, we're just committed to getting the best outcome for people. Um, so if you're in debt, give us a shout. I'd imagine working with an individual person, sort of case by case, and having that point of contact is so beneficial to people rather than just not knowing which way to turn, picking up the phone and just saying, I need to speak to somebody, and then having to re-go over everything. Whereas when you're working with the two team members you just mentioned there with Raj Beer and John, that uh, they're aware of a lot of the history and the case by case. They can actually work easier with the individual that's in that challenge. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, it is. But we have a really good team of advisors um, and we've got a really good database CRM that we use. That means actually anybody that picks up the phone to you in accommodation concern can find up to date information and will know what's going on. So it's not like you can only speak to John or Raj Beer or Brian, the other debt advisor. Anyone in the team has got that basic level of knowledge to be able to help. Uh, Joe, are we seeing an increase in people coming through the doors and people making inquiries to yourselves following, you know, obviously the, the challenges we've had over the last number of years with things like the pandemic and obviously the cost of living crisis? Yeah, we're seeing huge numbers. Our numbers have doubled in the past year. Um, and one of the things that we're proud of is uh, our debt is, is looked at reasonably and as said earlier, it's non-judgmental. But we're also looking at how can we maximise your income so again, that will look at us leading into our benefits advice and our benefits teams. So is it actually you might be eligible for another benefit that we can help you apply for? Um, a lot of people that are working don't realise that they might still be eligible for universal credit. I think the, the misconception is if you've on a salary of 30, 40,000 a year, you're not going to be eligible. But dependent on your circumstances, it's still worth doing a benefit check. Um, for people that are able to do it, go to a website like Turn to Us or the gov.uk have got benefit checks on there and you can do a benefit check yourself. If you're unsure, come to us and we'll do it with you and support you through it. For a lot of people, we find they're not eligible, but for quite a few, we find there is stuff they can get. Again, if you're on universal credit, you might be eligible for childcare costs. So it will help towards that. Um, it might, it's also a gateway to other benefits as well. Um, so it's looking at what's out there. We also find people don't look at pension credits. So if you're retired, pension credits again is something a lot of people don't think about claiming. Um, we had a lady a few months ago who was actually entitled to 5p a week, which she thought wasn't worth claiming, but pension credit meant that she was eligible for the government cost of living payments, which is worth £900. It also means that she's eligible for other government benefits. So your heating, I think it's the heating grants, the warm house grants and that kind of thing. So you might think 5p or a very minimal amount is not worth the hassle. It's what it opens up to. We also find when we're meeting with people that we identify there's actually a disability there that might mean they're entitled to a disability benefit they've never thought of. So we will help people claim for those as well. The most common is your PIP, personal independent payment, um, which is your 18 to retirement. If you're over retirement, it's attendance allowance. And they can be worth up to £600 plus a month if you get high rates. So they're worth looking at. These are all things that the charity can actually help with, actually helping people yep. to guide them through that process. Yeah, so once you've identified that you might be eligible... Again, we can help fill in that form or we can fill in that form with you or for you. If you feel confident, we're happy for you to do it and then we'll just check it before it goes over. Um, we, we will do as much support as people want. 
But if people are capable and just want that proofreading, we're happy to do that as well. The main thing is you get the benefits you're entitled to. We also know, unfortunately, that the majority of um, disability benefits come back with a did not accepted, didn't meet criteria, and we will help appeal all of those. And we get a really good success rate with the appeals. Yeah, that's really good to know as well, because obviously sometimes people get rejected and feel that that's the end of the journey, isn't it? But you can actually help with that, maybe reapplication, or maybe there was something not quite right on the application that you can actually help to guide people through. Yeah, sometimes it's about wording, um, and it shouldn't be. It's one of the things that really makes me quite cross with benefits, um, in that the the question might say, "Do you, for example, do you need help getting dressed?" And you might say. No, I don't need help, but it takes me half an hour. Whereas we can turn that around. And it's not exaggerating the truth. It's saying you do need help because the normal person would get dressed in five minutes. So actually, why is it taking you half an hour? Is it because you need to keep sitting down because you're getting breathless? Is it that you can't do zips, uh, can't do buttons and hooks or shoelaces? And you start to pull out all the things that actually say, yes, but <laughs> to actually put it in. Um, which is what gives you the points to get the benefits. Yeah, it's really interesting you mentioned that because you don't sort of think about that. You, you know, I just think about getting up and getting dressed, but, you know, some people obviously find it a little bit challenging to do that. So it's interesting that there's actually ways that you can actually talk to people and help people through that process. And just going back on the debt um, situation and probably the benefit situation as mm -hmm. well, I mean, this sometimes is a bit of a, you know, it's a personal decision to to come and talk with people like yourselves to actually work through these and i'm assuming there's people out there that are feeling that they are a bit embarrassed or a bit shamed in actually having to come and talk to people like yourselves what message could you give them to say you know come and see us i know people feel embarrassed um but as i said it doesn't matter we've all made mistakes or we've all got into situations that we we weren't our fault um it is a cost of living crisis out there and people are getting into debt and it's not their fault they're working full time they're doing everything they can to keep their head above water but costs are just going up and up and up and it's not your fault the, the thing i would just say is go and find some help from somebody free of charge to help you with it don't get into more debt paying for help i think some people just do look to struggle on uh, i've been there myself and you sort of think do you know what it will change it will change and it doesn't change so you know when you actually go and have that uh those sessions and that help and advice and can actually put a plan in place as well to actually exit the situation that the people find themselves in it's such a relief i you know can speak personally from that situation from from years ago so you know at the end of the day um you know, I'd, I'd advise anybody to come and speak with yourselves. I don't want to you know, flood you with people and new people coming through the door <laughs> because obviously it's workload and, and things like this. But at the end of the day, um, you're there to, to help support people that are in the situation. and People shouldn't feel ashamed, should they? No. Um, as I say, the cost of living crisis is biting. A lot of us through COVID just put our heads down and got on with it or maybe borrowed thinking we'll get out of it later. And actually, the later is not happening because either our jobs didn't come back or even, I mean, you look at the cost of going and doing a weekly shop now, it's it's almost doubled. Um, and if you've got small children or, in, in my case, teenagers that want to eat you out of house and home, you, you can't say there's nothing in the cupboard or that makes you feel even worse as a parent. So you just keep buying. Um and there is advice to actually say share money issues with your children. Let them understand it's not a bottomless pit or that the hole in the wall just doesn't keep giving it to you without you putting it in there in the first place. Because children do understand um, that actually maybe I can't afford it this week or we'll afford it next week or I had to buy school shoes for you so therefore you can't have trainers this week. Um, most, most of the children that we're working with do understand these kind of things. But I know as a parent, you feel like you would just want to keep giving. Um, but it's also part of their education. And on the flip side, with our supported accommodation, where we're working with homeless individuals, we're seeing so many of them were never taught financial support or how to manage their money by their parents. They just assumed money would always be there. 
And it is one of those things I think we need to get rid of that taboo in our society and talk about it. How do our teenagers know how much it's going to cost them to leave home and set up a flat if whenever they say they want something, they're given it? With, with our guys in supported, when they're ready to move on, we ask them to do a paper exercise of what do they want in their new flat when they move out. And then we ask them to go online and cost it. And they have a bit of a shock when they realise how much it costs to furnish a flat. And then it's about managing expectations or about teaching people budgeting. That actually, I feel really old saying this, but it's like we need to save to get what we want rather than borrow and pay it back. And it's a whole society change that I think needs to happen. Absolutely. It is the same in business as well. I mean, um, I speak to Tony Robinson, who's uh, a fantastic man who, um, you know, big micro biz champion based up in Yorkshire. But, uh, you know, we, we have a bit of engagement and he's even talking from the business point of view about bootstrapping and not borrowing for that reason mm -hmm. so that we can, you know, grow um, within our boundaries, within our means and not stretch ourselves too far because you start stretching yourselves too far. And I've been guilty of this in life. I think most people have. You stretch yourself too far financially and then you've got to repay it and then that becomes a pressure and a burden and all of a sudden a job loss creates a stress which knocks into health and and everything so you know certainly um you know i think what you're doing in being able to provide the service is essential uh it's kind of the service that we don't want to see growing but reality is it is yeah it, it is growing and it is reality but it is that as you say that that bootstrapping just being safe and thinking but actually if we've done it we can't change what we've spent our money on and it is then you see you borrow to the limit and as I say the car breaks down, the washing machine goes, all those key things um, that you then borrow Peter to pay Paul with. Um, and what interests me is particularly when we're doing income and expenditures and the recommendations are that within a budget, there should always be a saving amount going in. So even when we're looking at, at managing money, we are looking for people to start putting money away each week or each month to try and get people back into that saving before spending. That's how it used to be many years ago. When you say about feeling old, I'm exactly the same as well. I mean, I think, um, you yeah, know, when I look at what my parents did for me when I was younger, it was fantastic. They saved and saved and always taught me the lessons. That if you haven't got it, you can't spend it. But did I listen? No, I still did what I thought I wanted to do and obviously got myself into a bit of a situation. And and then obviously now I'll get the, uh, the reminder from the parents to say, look, you know, come on, you know, do it the right way. So saving, I think, is a great way. There are various schemes out there. Um, I've got one with comsave credit union which i can basically just save some money in there and withdraw it whenever i need to and a bit of interest gets paid and yeah that works for me so uh, i can access but at that the end of the I day if you haven't got the money to save i don't want people to feel bad or that we're going to push them into saving it, it's about let, let's look at what the situation is now doesn't matter how we've got there what we're going to be committed to do is get you out of it it might be um a year two years plan it might be actually we can go for something like a debt relief order or bankruptcy that wipes it um, and then you can start again. But there are quite strict rules around who's eligible for what. And I'm not a debt advisor, so I can't, I can't talk about those. But I've got the guys in my, in my team that know it inside out and will be there to help people all the way through. So I think uh, if people are out there that want to get that specialist advice, then um, do have a look at the website. We'll come onto the website shortly and get that address out so people can find out how to contact you. But um, let's touch briefly on the sleep out that took place in January, because obviously, uh, you know, you're dealing with a lot of people that uh, find themselves on the streets and homeless. And um, you had a charity sleep out at uh, Wicks Deep Park, which uh, was very well attended. And um, what was your sort of recollection from the evening? I must admit, I came away with a real buzz. It was the first time we've done an event like this, and we actually weren't sure how the public would support it. Um, but we came away having raised over £8,000, which is a phenomenal amount. Um, we had the quiz evening to start with, which we had over 100 people doing a quiz, which was really interactive, really fun. We had lots of giggles. Um, and then... We went upstairs and those that were staying, I think it was about 20 of us, actually did a sleep out. Um, it was a really cold night. Um, lots of 
lots of interactions but i think my one resounding thing when i walked away was having experienced it like that for one night i was so relieved i could go home and get warm and get in a hot bath and actually people at the sleeping rough don't have that opportunity at the end of the day um so we're just committed to support support people but at the end of the day we want to stop people having to sleep rough it's all very well saying we want to support those who are sleeping rough but for me that prevention is, is a much better option and that's what we're committed to and that's what the money is going to be going towards more advisors to help people with the benefits with the debt with the housing issues so that hopefully they won't need to sleep rough yeah you're absolutely right i mean um i i got up that next morning 7 a.m and i'm looking around and i'm thinking what would i do next where would i go if i was in the situation i looked behind me i think i looked at what i slept in and thinking wow that that sleeping bag and piece of cardboard and a bit of plastic and a bit of foil kept me alive for the night um yeah i did manage to get a few hours sleep but it was pretty windy and pretty cold and um i think it, at one point it actually dropped a freezing point i think didn't it yeah it hit zero i think it went slightly below it to be honest <laughs> from memory I think I slept through that bit, but um, but yeah, I mean, certainly sort of thinking the next morning, you know, what would I do? Where would I go? Where would I clean my teeth? Where would I brush my hair? Where would I, you know, have a wash? You know, the simple things mm. like that that you sort of think, but also who would I actually talk to? You know, what would I do next? Because people see people on the streets and, and see them and ultimately start to judge them very quickly that they're just a nobody when they've actually found themselves somebody that that person on the street is a son or daughter of you know somebody somewhere in the world so they do have a, an identity but you know what would i have done and who would i have spoken to the next morning if i was in that situation i just don't know what i would do so mm -hmm. it was just an incredible experience i think those were the experiences we didn't we didn't expect from it i mean we went into the event looking at raising money but actually those experiences i think were just as valuable if not more valuable um, and that's part of the feedback we've had from people that attended. Um, we are looking to do something else later on this year. We're aiming to try and do a virtual sleep out so that people can maybe do it in their back gardens or enable their children and young people to take part. Um, but we are also committed to doing another one next year. We're just trying to sort some dates out. So if you're interested in knowing more, contact us, watch this spot. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about contact now because obviously we touched on some of the services you're offering um and obviously there's various fundraising events that you'd be putting on through as well to, to raise money towards specific projects and things but how can people get in contact with the team or to find out more about accommodation concern so our website is www.accommodationconcern.co.uk trying to keep it as simple as possible um our email address is help at a hyphen c dot org dot uk that's the dash in the middle not the underscore our phone number is 01536 416 560 and we are open from nine till five monday to friday um pick up the phone and ask or send us an email and ask we purposely don't want referral forms because they're too complicated people don't feel them in it puts people off if you're struggling and you want help give us a ring, ping us an email, or find us on Facebook. We will do talk to people over Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp if that's easier for you. Um, we will meet you where you are. If you want to come to us, we're at Every Mind Crisis Cafe in the county. So if you look up for the Mind Crisis Cafes, we've got advisors there. Um, it's a turn up and wait and see somebody. So it's a drop-in facility. Um, and if it's urgent... You can come to the office um i'd rather sort of we make appointments with people but if you need to talk to somebody and today's the day you're going to deal with it we will do everything we can to deal with it um, we have several um people who work purely on our triage answering the phones who are qualified who know what they can do and if it's urgent they will put you through to an advisor the same day and we'll jump on the case so if you know you've got bailiff coming if you're being evicted if it's something that's really desperate, we'll deal with it same day. If you email us or leave a message, because maybe we're on the phone, our commitment is we'll get back to you within 48 hours. We usually do it the same day, um, but I hate to say it same day because if something else goes, or we've got a lot of urgent things, we would like that grace with people and understanding. 
but we are committed to get back to you um, as promptly as we can. So what about people that uh, want to just make that anonymous phone call just to find out what they need to do? Is that something that they can just phone into the office and speak to people anonymously or do they need to go onto the database almost pretty much straight away? You can phone and we can give you some generic advice, but that may not be specific to your details. So the more you can share with us, the more we can help you um, because every everybody's di situation is different. Everybody's benefit calculation is different. Um, but just because you go on a database doesn't mean there's any difference. Nobody has access to that database apart from the team that are helping you. Okay, we don't share it with DWP. We don't share it with the police. We don't share it with the council. The only reason we would share any information is if you're at risk of hurting yourself or somebody else or there is a fraud going on and we therefore we have to or it's linked to terrorism those sort of national things that we have to report but anything you say to us is totally confidential brilliant and i think it's really key to, to get that point over because people can feel quite alone in these situations and uh, obviously that reassurance is there from from yourself as the ceo so joe thanks for joining us really do appreciate it is there a closing message or anything you wanted to share with everybody today just to really uh, express some of the uh, what we've been talking about I think my closing message is just get help. If you need help, ask for it. Be brave. Pick up the phone. Don't worry about what people think because you're you're going to sleep better tonight having spoken to somebody. I think the, the other thing that I would say is we haven't mentioned the housing advice. If your relationship is breaking down and you need housing advice, again, we can do that confidentially. We, if for some reason there's a conflict of interest and so maybe your partner's come to see us, we would then work that one of you is seen by us and one of you is seen by another agency that we partner with. So just because your partner's getting advice doesn't mean you can't. I really do appreciate your time, Joe. Thank you for um, for joining us and uh, talking through those points. And I think it's really key that people know where they can turn to to get help around these key areas that you mentioned around debts, you know, housing, benefit advice, and and everything. So have a look at the Accommodation Concern website, and um, don't be frightened to pick up that phone or make an appointment with a member of the team there, and uh, they'll be able to uh, to help you with uh, wherever you find yourselves in your life.